This illustration deals with fixture wire, where the fixture wire could be smaller uh, conductors tapped to a branch circuit. Now notice the figure loop, if you wanted more information about grounding and so forth, what could be used as a grounding means for that whip, do you need an equipment ground uh, uh, routed with a fixture whip, we'd want to see figure 16 dash 109 in volume 2 of Stockup's design book if you wanted to obtain more information. But notice we have a 20 amp circuit routed to the uh, square box that you see above. We have a fixture whip to it of half inch and that might be a flexible metal conduit. It may be uh, weatherproof flex, but most of the time it's uh, what we call a greenfield is the old flexible metal conduit. And notice it's a half inch in rating and we have a number 18 wire. Now a lot of uh, inspectors won't allow this hookup. The, uh, and I'm saying inspectors, it's because it's in their ordinance. It's not they're wanting to pull anything. It's just the electrical ordinance for a particular state, county or city may require a fixture whip to be the same size as the branch circuit. So this should be checked before you use number 18. But notice that number 18 could be used in a 100 foot type tap from the 20 amp branch circuit. Number 16 could be in a length of 50 foot according to 240.5 B as in boy 2. So the 20 amp overcurrent device ahead of the branch circuit with a number 12 wire, we could tap in a six foot length as you see there with number 18. But you could tap as far as 100 foot uh, according uh, to this rule. But what we're saying here, many times out on a big job, uh, you will see fixture whips, number 18 or number 16, connected to a 20 amp branch circuit. Uh, in commercial, uh, this is done a lot uh, and will be done uh, if the ordinance of the city, state, or county uh, doesn't prohibit it. So uh, keep this in mind that when you're dealing with fixture wire and what size could be used for a tap to uh, a fixture and a suspended ceiling, then uh, 250.5B2 would deal with the tap fixture wire and then we could go to 410.117 and we would see that that whip does not have to be supported. Uh, it is considered uh, supported with the connectors uh, that connect the fixture and connect the fixture whip to the uh, uh, junction box or pull box that you see uh, above. So we have that going for us. We do not have to support it in six foot lengths or less. And if we should review 250.118 and uh, also review the section that deals with supporting a flexible uh, metal conduit or tubing uh, in some cases, uh, we would find that uh, we could even use, say, uh, using uh, a flexible uh, metal conduit, that the conduit could serve as the grounding means, where, again, state, counties, and cities do not require an equipment ground to be routed with the flex up to six foot. It could serve as a grounding means on a 15 or 20 amp circuit as long as the connectors were listed and identified for grounding and for supporting means. So that's a big benefit, but keep this in mind. If you're the electrician and you tap, say seven or eight foot of flexible metal conduit, it's mandatory then by 410.117, along with article 250.118 to pull an equipment ground through the flexible metal conduit that you're making the tap with. But notice you could still use the number 18 or number 16 wire that's listed in 240.5B2. And that's what this uh, figure 9-14 is illustrating. 
So keep in mind the review of 410.117 when you're making such a tap with smaller conductors to the larger conductors on a 20 amp circuit.